So Angelina Jolie is just another example of how we're seeing the woke, be kind, feminist brigade suddenly completely silent when it comes to Jewish or Israel suffering or trauma. It's bizarre, but it's actually not so bizarre because there's a very straightforward way to explain it. I want to explain it, but first of all, I want you to show you just how stark the obvious uh, double standards and uh, ignoring of Jewish suffering and Israel suffering when it comes to female sexual violence uh, with Angelina Jolie. Have a watch of this clip produced by an account called Rachel Lea. Seeing everyone celebrate Angelina Jolie at the Venice Film Festival is reminding me of my Roman Empire. My Roman Empire is thinking about how Angelina Jolie has made it her life's mission and purpose to end sexual violence against women, specifically in areas of conflict. And anytime a woman is sexually abused, she is the first to call it out and like scream at the world to finally end this evil. And then on October 7th, 2023, when Israeli women were mass raped by Hamas, she just didn't say a word, nothing. Like she's not even embarrassed. It's been almost a year, not a word. Ra radio silence. I think about this at least once a day. Seeing every- Yeah, it's uh, it's shocking, but it's not so shocking really. I remember seeing an another clip of the uh, Hirsch Goldberg Pollins uh, mother, the late Hirsch, so sad to say that, but the late Hirsch's mother um, who was saying that she would contact friends, people in very senior positions, it sounded like in academia and culture and media, and they were friends of hers in the aftermath of October 7th, where she said, I just, I just, not even will you speak out, but can we have a private chat? And she said, they weren't prepared to have a private call with me. And she said, I didn't want to name names, which is very honorable, but at the same time, it's shocking to hear this. She said they didn't even want to have a private chat because they were worried it might get leaked that she, they were having a private chat with her and it might mean that they lose followers and all that kind of thing. It is sick. How does this happen? Basically, what's happened is Israel has become so vilified, seen as so evil in the eyes of this these chattering classes and the celebrity elites that basically, well, they had it coming. That's the way it, it goes. That's the way the thinking goes. You occupy, you take over a people's land. Well, then of course you're going to get resistance. And don't expect me to suddenly stand up for you when you've been doing these terrible things. It's sick because it's such a twisting of reality, but that's what's happened. And in the woke progressive mindset, anyone that is powerful, bad, powerless, good. And anything the powerless does that may be perceived as immoral, well, what do you expect? That's because they're powerless and we need to rebalance the system. It's so sick because the truth is that Israel is not the aggressor. From the beginning, Israel has sought to make peace. Israel never displaced people in an offensive war. Israel's... The, the Jews said, okay, we'll split the land with the Arabs. That was the U what the UN proposed. The British were controlling it before. And the Arabs said, no, we're going to try and kill the Jewish state, kill the Jews. So the Jews had to defend themselves. And in, in the result of that war, many Arabs were displaced. Many of them actually left because Arab armies told them to leave. And since then, all the things that they lament about occupation, why is there occupation? Because the Arabs, surrounding Arabs started a war against Israel in 67 to try and annihilate it. And since then, Israel's had to control that territory. And try and figure out what to do. But they've tried to agree to two-state solutions. But every time they do, they're met with intifada, terror. And, uh, and now they've realized they can't go down that route because they tried it on a smaller level with Gaza and what they got was Hamas, they got October 7th. It would be national suicide to agree to a two-state solution now. But the point is, Israel has always extended the hand of peace. Israel has always had the far stronger claim to the land. And so this picture, this narrative that Israel is somehow the bad guy is uh, a twisting of reality. All the Arab-Palestinian suffering, so-called Palestinians, is self-inflicted. There'd be no wars, there'd be no checkpoints, there'd be no blockades, there'd be no all these things. If they simply said, okay, we'll make peace with the notion of the Jews returning to their ancient homeland. 
and re-establishing sovereignty there. But yes, even still, even if you were to think that Israel was evil, the people that suffered on October 7th were people who were simply citizens of Israel. And the fact that they are silent, people like Jolie who are silent in the face of clear documented, not just by Israel, by the United Nations, by Sheryl Sandberg in her horrifying documentary, Screams of False Silence. And yet Jolie says nothing. Could it be any more clear the uh, moral vacuousness of the modern Western secular paradigm that we have? I think one of the things I said at the start of October 7th is that we're starting to see the great idols of the West collapsing. Media, celebrity culture, sports culture, NGOs, colleges, Ivy Leagues, all the great idols that we looked as beacons for leadership and moral leadership, certainly, at least some people did, have exposed themselves as being morally empty and vacuous. And we're seeing this again here with this example. But you know what? Idols collapsing when they are false idols is a good thing. It's a progress for humanity. It's important to remember that these idols that we see are really elites. They don't represent the masses. And it's good for the masses to have these idols, these beacons, collapse so that we can move forward to a much healthier, much more proper form of morality and moral leadership. This is a positive development for humanity, much as it's painful to witness. Hi, thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.